Jackie Robinson, a book written by David A. Adler, illustrated by Robert Castellini, read to you today by Mrs. Cobb. Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born on January 31, 1919, in a small old farmhouse near Cairo, Georgia. His parents were Mally and Jerry Robinson. Jackie's grandfather had been a slave. Jackie was the youngest of five children. His father worked on Jim Sasseter's plantation, but he had worked for such low wages that his wife said were no better off than slaves. Jerry Robinson complained to the owner of the plantation. After that, he was no longer paid wages. Instead, he became a sharecropper. He kept a share of whatever he grew and gave the rest to Sasser. In July 1919, Jerry Robinson said he was leaving to look for better work. He traveled by train to Florida and didn't come back. After Jerry Robinson left, Sasser told Mally and her children to leave too. Mally worked as a maid for a while. Then, in May 1920, she took her family west to Pasadena, California, where her brother Burton lived. He had urged her to join him and get a little closer to heaven. For an African-American family, though, Pasadena was not quite heaven. The public pool was open only one day a week to blacks. In the movie theaters, blacks had to sit separately from whites in the balcony. On Pepper Street, where the Robinsons lived, one neighbor called the police before his wife was afraid of African Americans. The white neighbors cursed the Robinsons and even threw rocks at them. They tried to scare them out and then to buy them out, but Mally wouldn't move. Jackie loved to play games and sports. He played dodgeball, stickball, jacks, marbles. He played to win. And usually he did. At John Muir Technical High School and then Pasadena Junior College, Jackie Robinson starred in track and field, football, basketball, and baseball. At the University of California at Los Angeles, UCLA, he was a football hero and he was the first student to star in all four sports. In 1940, at UCLA, Jackie Robinson met Rachel Isom, a smart, beautiful nursing student. At first, Rachel didn't like Jackie. She thought he was arrogant, but they talked and she realized she was wrong. Jackie was a warm and sensitive man. Jackie Robinson left UCLA in the spring of 1941, a short time before he would have graduated. He worked he wanted to work and earn money to help his mother. Jackie went to Hawaii, where he joined the Honolulu Bears, a professional football team willing to have an African American play for them. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, near where Jackie had lived. Luckily, he was already on a ship heading back to California. Following the attack, the United States entered the Second World War. In 1942, Jackie was drafted into the Army and sent to Fort Riley, Kansas. Jackie complained when he was kept off the Army baseball team because he was black. He complained, too, that the Camp Post Exchange, the PX, restaurant had separate sections for black and white soldiers. Jackie Robinson and other African Americans at Fort Riley applied to be training officers. They were turned down because they were black. Jackie spoke to Joe Lewis, an African-American. He was a heavyweight boxing champion of the world for a while, a soldier at Fort Riley. A few days later, Jackie and other African-Americans were admitted to the officer candidate school. The Army sent Lieutenant Robinson to Camp Hood, Texas. There on a bus, the driver told him, get back to the back where colored people belong. Separate seating on the army bus was no longer allowed. Jackie Robinson didn't move. At the last stop, the military police took him to their duty officer. They argued, and in August 1944, Robinson was court-martialed 
which means put a trial by the army, for not showing respect to an officer. Jackie Robinson was judged to be innocent, but he had enough of that army life. He was released a few months later. In 1945, professional baseball was a segregated sport. There were no African Americans playing on any of the major league teams. They played the Negro Leagues on teams such as the Homestead Grays, the Birmingham Black Barons, and the Kansas City Monarchs. After Jackie Robinson left the Army, he played shortstop for the Monarchs. He was a good fielder and a hitter and fast and a smart base runner. Negro League baseballs attracted large crowds, sometimes even larger than the all-white Major League teams playing in the very same city. Jackie Robinson didn't know it, but among the thousands of people who watched him play were scouts for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Branch Rickey, the president of the all-white team, had decided it was time that the Major League Baseball became truly a national game open to all players, black and white. The scouts were looking for an African-American player who was good enough to help the team win and brave enough to be the first black in the All-Whites Major League. On August 28, 1945, Branch Rickey met Jackie Robinson. Rickey told Robinson that he'd like him to play for the Dodgers, but he could expect trouble. Rickey said, I'm looking for a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. In 1946, Jackie Robinson played for the Montreal Royals, the Dodgers' top minor league team. That year, he also married Rachel Isom, the beautiful nursing student he had met at UCLA. They had three children, Jack Jr., Sharon, and David. In April 1947, Jackie Robinson reported to the Brooklyn Dodgers. At first, in some cities, he could not stay in the very same hotels as his white teammates, nor eat in the same restaurants. Ball players on other teams threatened to strike and not play the Dodgers. They insulted Robinson and even kicked him. He received letters threatening him and his family. Baseball players and fans said that the Robinson experiment wouldn't work and that blacks and whites couldn't play on the same baseball team. Jackie Robinson proved they were wrong. In the year 1947, Robinson's first on the Dodgers was said to be the toughest first season any baseball player had faced. At the end of it, Robinson was selected Rookie of the Year for being the best first-year player in the major leagues. In 1949, he was selected as the most valuable player in the National League. While Jackie Robinson played for the Dodgers, the team won six National League pennants, and each time they played the New York Yankees in the World Series. The Dodgers won in 1955 and were Major League Baseball World Champions. Until after the 1956 season, when Robinson retired, he was one of the best baseball players. In 1962, he was the first African American inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. In 1956, Jackie Robinson was awarded the Spinga Medal for Sportsmanship and his work with young African Americans. In the years following his retirement from baseball, Robinson worked as the vice president of Chock Full of Nuts Restaurants. He was active in his efforts to get equal rights for African Americans and he helped establish the Freedom National Bank in Harlem, New York City. Jackie Robinson was stricken with diabetes and heart disease. He died of a heart attack on October 24, 1972. He was just 53 years old. Jackie Robinson was a gifted athlete. But it was his courage more than his ability to play baseball that made him truly great. Being the first African American player in the Major League Baseball was an important step towards equal rights for all Americans.